On the 10th of May, bookshops finally opened. After one year of several up and downs and lockdowns, customers can finally look into the shelves and decide what to buy physically instead of doing it online without the real experience. I visited an Irish independent bookshop that sells second-hand books. The owner, Alain Warnock, kindly agreed to talk about the effects of the lockdown on the last bookshop. There's no point my putting the books online because there's just too many of them. And uh, so I, what I did was I uh, put books in the window and people rang me and asked me, see, like uh, there's a gentleman, somebody might come in and say, do you have, you know, this book or that book or the rest of it? And I would sell them that way. But other than that, I couldn't open up. People I, were still getting in touch and people wanted to, to, to give me books or sell books. You know, I've got into more books than I had. I haven't sold any of them. So... I'm just, as you can see here, a wash with books. Well, the thing is that what, what you get, the books here that you get in the shop, you're not going to get anywhere else. So if you, if you go to, if you go to, um, you know, sort of one of the big stores, Easton's or Hodges Figures, you know, they have a limited selection of books and the rest of it. But um, with, with shorter print runs, it's difficult to get some books. You're just not going to get them again. And so I have things that, that people, you know, are looking for sometimes. Um, and books that you just have no idea what you're going to get. Alan decided to have end books because they are cheaper. It is also a new trend and goes with an eco-friendly attitude. Here they, they couldn't keep the, they wouldn't let the bookshops open and whereas off licenses were open so it's very very annoying really. Some people opened when they had, they were able to sell pencils and newspapers and things and they were using that as a, um, uh, an excuse to stay open. I, well, I was actually bringing books into the shop one day and I just had the door open and somebody uh, came in and they saw a book and they said, oh, can I take, take this? And they left me, uh, whatever, five euros, whatever it was for it. And like, I mean, literally three minutes later, the guards were in. A lot of people were saying, a lot of people were very frustrated. Because of COVID-19 pandemic rules, Alan tried his end at social media and online sales. Despite a high number of views, sales were not successful at all. People, I think people liked looking at them. Oh, this is very, very interesting. But it didn't actually translate into anybody actually phoning up and saying, can I buy it? Because people come in here and they leave with things. Like a man came in, um, a man came in one day and he bought a spade down the road and he was looking for gardening books. And he left with an Irish English dictionary and he was delighted with himself. He didn't get any gardening books, but you see, that's the kind of thing. And people like that and they go home with something and you see people buying the craziest, you know, the two mixes of things. They come in and say they buy a novel and some, you know, book on knitting. And they love it. And it you know, so it's, but there's no way you can anticipate that people are going to do that. It's just one of those things. Even though most bookshops were closed during the pandemic, what's funny about it is that the COVID-19 pandemic contributed to a stellar year in the Irish book trade in 2020. And yes, people bought more books this year than ever. Stocks reached record peaks and Wall Street boomed in a steady golden roar. We must start first with the giant of the industry, Amazon. I made a list of 20 different products that you might be able to sell online. I was looking for the first best product and I chose books for lots of different reasons, but one primary reason, and that is that there are more items in the book space than there are items in any other category by far. There are over three million different books worldwide in all languages. The largest physical bookstores, uh, the largest superstores, uh, and these are huge stores uh, often converted from bowling alleys and movie theaters, can only carry about 175,000 titles. There are only a few that large. In, in our online catalog, we're able to list over two and a half million different titles. Alex Green writes for the publisher's weekly magazine. He split his time between writing and teaching opinion writing at the Public Policy School of Harvard University. He wrote several articles on the bookshop industry, and it is why I asked him his opinion on the subject. So they, it seemed to the general public like the bookselling industry was becoming very healthy in terms of the independent booksellers, not Amazon, not Barnes and Noble. In actuality, many of us knew that those businesses were not very stable. They were very weak and they were weak because 
a lot of them were opened by people who did not have a very good business background. Um, they were people who wanted to be around books and opened it because they they opened these stores because they care about culture and community, but may not have had the the financial skills to run them. You you take a lot of books into your store. It's kind of a gamble, right? You're guessing what people will buy, and you have to ship the things back that you don't um, you don't sell. And I think the pandemic just immediately everybody saw that it was a threat to an already fragile system for independent booksellers. Um, um, and the head of the American Booksellers Association, which is the large trade organization for all booksellers, uh, predicted that there would be, I think she said more than half of bookstores would close by the end of the year. So why didn't that happen is a big question. And um, uh, it didn't happen for a number of reasons. Um, one is that booksellers adapted very, very quickly to their circumstances. Um, and they specifically turned to the one thing they knew they had, which was community support, who was interested in creating a serious competitor to Amazon and creating a pool of funding that could all booksellers could go into. So you go on to bookshop and you type in where you want to buy your book from, and you can buy it from a bookstore nearby, but it's as easy to use as Amazon. And specifically, what he was trying to get were click-through sales from places like when you read an article in the New York Times, or if you read something in Le Monde that the, the, about a book, the, the, the sell button would take you to bookshop.org as much as it would take you to Amazon. Suddenly, they had that solution. And because something unexpected happened, in April of 2020, Amazon had so many orders for non-book items that they made a public statement that backfired. And their public statement was, we are deprioritizing books. Mm -hmm. And because everybody was locked inside and needed books for their kids, for themselves, they all went to their independent bookstores. The death of books that was supposed to happen 10 years ago has not happened. We were supposed to have ebooks be the thing. Especially after the pandemic, people like print. They want print books. So that's good. That's kind of out, out the window. People are going to keep reading print books. Um, their, their chances are better given the way things look right now. But the one other thing I'll add is just that there are serious economic problems with this industry on the back end. What books cost for different people who buy them and how they get them and what um, kind of um, perks they get. As long as that system is in place, the booksellers are constrained in what they can do. And, and by that, I mean publishers and Amazon are a for, they're, they're making that hard for independent booksellers. I finally came to visit the Village Bookshop, a little family business. Alice explains this particular link between a bookseller and his community. Now, a lot of our customers are very regular and local and we know, you know, sometimes I'll see a book, a book review in the newspaper and I'll think, oh, Eamon would like that book. I think since the pandemic people care more. Actually, they're more conscious of being local. People also they realise that if they don't support local shops, they, they'll be gone. And then Amazon can charge whatever they like because they'll have no competition. We have to live to see the future of booksellers and their bookshops. But for now, continue to read and try to support little companies.